Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to sit down with you guys, catch up, do a chatty get ready with me, and try a bunch of new makeup. So I have been going through tons of renovations at my house. I had touched on this in a video a while back, but I never really updated you, and I feel like things are settling down. We have really made some progress that I wanna share with you. I've shared a little bit on Instagram stories, but I really wanna show you what we actually have finished and a good outcome for some of those things. So I just wanna update you on how the new house is, show you some stuff that we have done, show you maybe some clips of like furniture, stuff like that, things that I'm loving, and I will link everything that I talk about down below. But I also want to just chat, catch up, and try some new makeup. I always try to do this and I'm not the best, so I'm gonna try to focus on the makeup here and there, but also just kinda catch up with you guys. So I know we just went through the Sephora sale madness, that's a huge time of year, and I do think I have another haul coming because because some of my packages actually arrived, some stuff that I ordered on the tail end, and then I do have stuff that I ordered and I didn't share with you guys at all when I wasn't filming. So I have a big haul coming, but I thought we could just catch up today. So of course I will link everything that I use down below in my description box, and then I will also link anything that I show for the home, because I'm just gonna kind of put some clips in and tell you guys what we've done, so I'll link some of that stuff down below as well. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this chatty get ready with me. All right, so I've got you zoomed in and I wanted to use one of the new lip balms from Naturium. I am in love with this formula. I've raved about it a few times, more so on community tab or Instagram. But these balms from Naturium are affordable and incredible. I know it's shocking to hear, but these have actually replaced my Too Faced. I still love the Too Faced pillow balms, don't get me wrong, but I've been reaching for these for, I don't know, a couple months now. I have these scattered all over my house. They have a bunch of really pretty bright colors, which I adore, but they came out with this coffee collection. So I'm gonna use this shade, which is my favorite. It's called Latte. What I like about this formula is that it is so, juicy and it's pigmented and you guys know that I'm a huge fan of glosses with pigment so I should probably stop talking while I'm doing this so this is the lightest sort of like pinky nude you can see that you actually get some color payoff this collection I feel like would be absolutely gorgeous if you have like tan deeper skin tones just to show you like the kind of pigment you can expect this one right here is spice but this is something that you can use at night which I do or during the day and I just feel like it kind of doubles as a lip gloss lip balm but because they actually have pigment you can use these as your lip color alone they're just super hydrating comfortable they're not sticky and I just love that there's so many shades to choose from so if you like the nudes, you definitely wanna check out this collection. Cannot rave about these enough, so I wanted to share those. And I wanna do another look with the Huda Beauty Pretty Grunge Palette. I did a first impressions on this palette. It's a few videos back, and I absolutely loved the look that I came up with. But I wanna play around and do something really soft for every day. And I might actually dip into more of the warmer shades in here. This is definitely a cool palette, but it does have some warmth in there. So it's kind of like a middle of the road. You have options. I did also want to use the refer brushes again. So they came out with these sets, which are the mini and the max set. So the max set is just larger options of their favorite brushes or best selling eye brushes. And then the mini is mini versions. So they have these on sale right now. They have like their Black Friday starting already. So their whole site is like 50% off. And I just looked these up, five brushes in each kit and they retail for $60. So it's like $12 a brush, which is a amazing deal. I think Refer excels with their eye brushes. I do have a few of their face brushes that I use and love, like the bronzer and the blush. I like more of their brushes for powders, but their eye brushes are just really, really special because they have so many little detail brushes that I feel like you can't get at other brands. So I'm gonna be using these again. I think I used them in my original Huda video, but I thought I had washed them, so let's go ahead and use these again, and I will link them down below because, again, they have their sale going on right now. Okay, so for my look, I'm gonna start out with heroin, and I'm gonna use the 01 Max. I didn't set the lower part of my eyelid just because sometimes I like to play around with 
setting it and not setting it. I feel like people really feel strongly one way or the other. They're either team set it or don't. So I'm just using this sort of as a transition. So when I last updated you on the house situation, we had talked about how horrible of a time we had with contractors, how I had three bathrooms completely tore up and a mud room. We had no vanities, no showers, nothing. We were doing double mortgage, trying to live at the old house and have this one renovated. I mean, it was truly a nightmare. If you missed that video, I can link it below talking about what we went through, but just when you think it couldn't get worse, it did. And it's just so unbelievable. So at that point, I had essentially fired the people that were remodeling our bathrooms because they did the most horrific tile I've ever seen in my life. It was atrocious and I just had enough. So I kind of told myself, you know, we're gonna take a break. We're just gonna calm down. And we did for a little bit, pretty much like one of the only contractors that I really trust. He uh, looked at the situation and gave me a quote to fix it and the timeline. And so he came in and basically redid or finished the stuff that they had messed up the previous people. When I tell you the amount of work, it was just unbelievable and the mess that the other people left behind. So we had him come in and he worked, I wanna say it was like two and a half weeks straight, him and his crew came in and they fixed everything. Uh, so that's why I wasn't filming there for a while again because they were in my house literally like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day, banging saws, the whole shebang. So they ended up fixing and finishing everything except for the one nightmare bathroom, which is gonna have to be completely gutted. And I just don't have the mental capacity right now. And also uh, the contractor that was fixing everything, he's busy. Like he's busy. He doesn't have, you know, time to do everything all at once. So we're planning on in January, he's gonna come back and he's gonna redo that bathroom, which is gonna cost me so much money, but I'm just trying to like, just let it be right now, it is what it is. So next I'm gonna go in to this really warm shade called Liberty, and I'm gonna use a 01 Mini. So we ended up doing a dog wash, which I adore. I had this thought when we bought the house, there was a mud room, but they had their laundry, and I just like did not want my laundry in the entryway of the home. And also the only bathtubs were upstairs, and I'm like, how am I gonna carry these dogs all the way upstairs? The stairs in this house are wood and they're pretty steep so it's not something that I want my dogs like running up and down so I thought about doing a dog wash in place of where the washer and dryer was in the mud room and then moving the washer and dryer up to the master and I'm so glad that I thought of that because that's exactly what we ended up doing and with all of the chaos that happened I truly thought we were at the point of no return like I thought it was so messed up that it just wouldn't be able to be salvaged and we were just gonna have to like do some half-assed thing that I didn't love and it ended up being stunning. I splurged on like gold fixtures, oh, the tile, I mean everything about it is perfect. I'm so happy with it. So it is right in our mud room when you walk in and it's just really nice because we do have a pond and Ian works hard labor. So a lot of times, you know, when we're outside doing yard work or he comes home from work and his boots are muddy, we can use it. And then also the dogs, I've given them baths in it and it's just so convenient because it's just right there. So that I think is my favorite of everything. Of course, we repainted the bathroom downstairs because there is a half bath off the mud room and we went with a really dark color from sherwin williams i think it was called urbane bronze and i just love it we thought about just doing one of the bathrooms with like a really dark moody vibe and we thought just like the half bath would be perfect i think in that bathroom we still have to move one of the lights a lot of the times we're having issues with things just not being level not being centered like the light fixtures in this house they're not centered in the hallways or the room or over the vanity. So once you put a vanity in and sinks, then your lights are off. You know, they're off by like six inches, 12 inches. So we have to have those moved, mudded around, painted. There's just so many details that really are time consuming that we've had to change. And then we have the master bathroom that is 
almost complete. The contractor that fixed everything did an incredible job. He built up the base of the shower, made sure it was waterproofed, water tested it, did all of the things. He put the fixtures on, and again, I splurged on those really pretty gold fixtures. We're just waiting on the shower door to come in and me to pick the mirrors. I think that it turned out beautifully, especially given the circumstances. Those were two rooms that actually are completed and they were huge projects. Like the biggest project I would say in this house, hands down was the bathroom renovation and the master when you're actually like knocking out walls. Building a shower alone seemed to be like the most expensive, time consuming, big project of the house. So I'm thankful that that's over. Next I'm gonna grab a little bit of Rise Up and I'm just gonna use the Refer 14 Max. And I'm gonna try to blend these together and just sort of buff up. So that's the update with the bathrooms. On top of that, we had the entire house inside painted. It's a pretty big house, it's over 3,000 square feet. So that was another project and it just hadn't been painted, honestly, in a long time. The previous owners, I don't think, really put anything into the house and they lived here, you know, for like, 10 years. So we just kind of had to like fix a bunch of things that were just not right, which is stressful and expensive. But, and then we also changed out a ton of light fixtures. This house was a struggle because a lot of the ceilings are wood beams. So we really need something that has a lot of light, but it's not going to hang too low. So I don't have the entire house completely changed in terms of the light fixtures, but I have a lot of it. We've also been using some sconces from Amazon that I am obsessed with. So they're wireless and they basically are just like battery operated and we use them every single night. They're like a hundred bucks for a set of two, super easy to put on the wall and they're just incredible. They have so many different styles. I actually have two different styles so far, one in my entryway and then one in the living room. I will link those down below because I, I honestly love them. Thought about doing like a home favorites video because I truly have like replaced everything in this house because it was really outdated. Next, I think I'm gonna go into this kind of muted shimmer called Stand Up and I'm just gonna put this on the lid very just sort of softly. I'm also gonna try to take a smidge of this silvery shade called Maverick, just because I feel like I want a little bit more oomph. This is one of those like really creamy shades. I'm just going to really lightly apply this. This can be crazy intense, but I don't really want it to be. I just kind of want a little sparkle. Next, I'm gonna go into this deeper brown shade called Hope. And I just wanna use a little bit of this to add some depth. Strangely, I feel like this shade is not meshing as well as I thought it would with that orange, but trying to blend the two together. Okay, so I went ahead and did my wings off camera. They're not the best, but we're just gonna roll with it. I'm gonna go ahead and curl my lashes with the Refer Lash Curler. And then I have a sample of this Benefit mascara. I feel like I've been hearing really good things about it. It's the Fan Fest. I have just a travel size that I got, I think with one of my Sephora orders. So it has one of those curled wands, which I actually, don't mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and start coating. Okay, I don't feel like much is coming off here. So definitely seems like a dry formula. Ooh, I'm getting a lot of length. Okay, I feel like getting close to clump territory. So this is one eye with the mascara. I feel like it's a dry formula. It's definitely buildable. It gives me length, but not a ton of volume. A little bit of clumping on the corners or the edges of my lashes. Like this one's driving me nuts and no matter what I do, it's just like clumped together. Okay, so here are both eyes with the mascara. I do think that it really kind of gave me a lot without a lot of effort. It just is one of those that I feel like you kind of have to be careful with. So let me know if you've tried that below. I feel like it's been getting pretty good reviews so far. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry and then I think I'm just gonna add like a corner lash but I want to go in and start on my skin so I'm just using my Freck moisturizer. Now that I'm looking at it I probably should have gotten another one during the sale. I am not good at planning but I want to use base products that I know I love because I'm trying a new foundation. I'm also gonna use a little bit of my Blur Jam just in the center of my T-zone here. 
just because I know that this is one of my favorite primers. For foundation, I want to test out this new Euphoria Date Night Skin Tint Serum Foundation. It says it's a medium buildable coverage, weightless texture, glass skin finish, and then it's 68% skincare active ingredients. So they sent this over to me. I have the shade 245, and then I also have a brush that they sent over. I've used the brush and I really like it. I feel like this shade might work. It's interesting because because it's pretty thick for a serum, usually like a serum foundation, or at least I think of a serum foundation as a thinner texture. Whoa. Okay, probably used a little too much, so I'm gonna spread this around. So as I'm blending it, I feel like a little goes a long way. I also feel like it has that thicker skincare feel, so I can see that aspect when they say it's made up of a lot of skincare ingredients. It's got that skincare feel. I'm wondering how this is gonna work out for my combo skin. Definitely see a glow. Looking at my skin after I have blended everything out, there's definitely a glow. I don't think that this is super flattering on texture. We'll have to see how it does with powder, but I do feel like it's one of those that is a little bit smeary, like it's not wanting to stick to my nose. Coverage seems higher than I thought, and I have a bunch left that I don't need to use. So I would say less is more. It does have a nice coverage, but I just don't know if it's the most flattering for my skin type. But I wanna go ahead and demo a concealer that's not brand new, but I feel like I had some questions about it, and I don't think that I filmed with this. This is the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. I feel like people love this concealer. I tried it a couple times off camera and I just wasn't wowed, but I wanna try it again. So I have the shade YP3. This was sent to me in PR a while ago. So I'm just gonna apply this right in the center. This is a thicker formula. And I'm just gonna start blending out. Whoa. I think maybe I used too much. I got like a heavy hand going on today. I just removed a little bit of it because I feel like it's a little much. Okay, so this is what the skin is looking like. I feel like this looks very heavy and I'm not loving it, but I feel like both of these products are just really heavy for my skin type. I'm hoping that this powder can save the day. I haven't demoed this on camera, but I have been obsessed with this powder. This is the Lunar Beauty Lunarversal Setting Powder in Light. I actually was sent this a while back when it launched. My neighbor got it at my old address and then she had COVID and I was like, I'll see you in a few weeks. So I tried it super late, but I have been wearing this every single day for the past, I wanna say like four weeks maybe. If you look at some of my videos that I posted recently, this is what I've been wearing. This is the most smoothing powder that I've ever tried. This beats out the Huda. I feel like lately I'm finding new favorites like the Naturium lip balms, this powder, the Cali Ray spray that are just replacing Holy Grail products. It kind of surprises me. So I'm hoping that this can save the day. I guess it's a good time to demo it. So the packaging is really cool. And then inside you have this little kind of cover that you can pop up. I'm not good at doing this with my nails. Here we go. And then this is the powder. Now the powder is extremely finely milled and I thought initially I wasn't gonna like it. It's so finely milled, way more thin than like the Huda Beauty. And I thought it wasn't gonna do anything. It was gonna cling. It is so incredibly smoothing. I can't tell you how much I love this powder. I went ahead and zoomed you in a little bit more and I'm just going to blend out any of the creasing. And then I go in with a puff, dip right into the powder and press. has like a very, very, very light scent, but nothing like the Huda, which I appreciate. So I guess we could just start with half of the face so you can see the magic. Like, look at my forehead. <laughs> look how smooth my skin looks. And I literally hate the way it looked wet. Like, look at all 
of this texture. So I'm just blending out, creasing on this side and going in. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this Too Faced liner in my waterline. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of mascara on the outer portion. I'm also gonna take maybe one, I don't know, maybe two of these Kiss Voluminish Impress Lashes. I just love these, they're so easy to work with. So I'm gonna grab the long cluster and I'm just gonna put this on the outer portion. And then you can take your applicator and just squeeze it. And then I also am grabbing a medium length I'm just going to place that right next to it and then again just squeeze. Okay, so moving on to bronzer, I'm just going to use an old favorite. This is the Victoria Beckham Bronzing Brick in 03. So I'm just going to use this to bronze up the skin. Uh, back to the house. We also had our cabinets in the kitchen painted, also a new countertop, new backsplash, new sink, just all of the handles, although I think I might change the handles because I don't know, it's hard to match stuff. The company that did the backsplash in the countertop, I don't know what happened, but they messed up like multiple things to the point where they had to come back for two separate appointments to fix it. It's just been a hot mess and they just fixed it today. I think I put my deposit down in September. It just got done today and today is November, I don't even know the date, 6th, 7th. Everything is just a cluster, you know what? Okay, so I have to show you this. I hope you can see it, but... This foundation is coming completely off my nose just from bronzing it. Like it's wiping completely off. So there's that. Moving on to blush, I thought I would demo some of these Armani blushes that I was raving about in my Sephora recommendations. I bought two and then I picked up a third one. So I have this shade right here, which is Ecstasy. This is a really pretty pink, has like a purple undertone, but it's not too light. And then I also have Euphoric. This one's super glowy. But today I wanna go in with the new one I purchased, which this one is the shade 30. I think it's called Off B. It's a really pretty burnt orange. So this is a harder pressed formula, meaning that it's not powdery, has a subtle glow to it, but it's not like chunky glitter. So I'm going to start with this one, and then I think I'm going to go in with a little bit of the pink. So now I'm going to dip into Ecstasy, which is that pink shade. I'm just going to blend these together. And I'm going a little heavy because I'm going to go over it with a powder and take it all the way across my nose. And then just to blend everything together, I'm going in with my powder brush. Literally, the foundation is already patching. And I've not even done anything like what just from blending. All right, we're just gonna ignore the forehead situation because it's a trying to make up. But I wanna go in with my Tom Ford highlighter. I picked this up before the sale and this is stunning. I recommended it in my recommendations. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous highlighter. They have a pink one. I didn't end up getting it because I was trying to just calm down a little bit, but I love this formula. It's one of those baked gelée which is my personal favorite. And you can see it gives you a stunning glow. So even though we had all the struggles with our kitchen, our kitchen is getting there. We still have a couple things to do, but I will put some photos in of the backsplash and the countertop and my sink. Oh, I love my sink. I love, love, love my faucet. It is stunning. Okay. I literally have no foundation on my nose. What in the heck and Bob, as Whitney Simmons would say, is going on here? This foundation is just gonna be a no for me. I'm gonna take a little bit of a brightening powder just to sort of brighten up. 
because I feel like we're looking a little rough here. And we're gonna go on to lips and then do our final thoughts. So I'm gonna go on with the Natasha Denona Lip Liner in Stormy. I love this shade. For lipstick, I wanna use this Valentino Lip and Cheek that I purchased a while ago. So I have the shade here, I think it's 109R. I'm gonna to have to put this down below. Now these, I like them on the lips, but I don't like them on the cheeks. They're very, very sheer, but I wanna use this as a base. I just love this shade, oh my goodness. So I'm gonna build this up. You can see how sheer it is though. I just wish these had a little bit more pigment, but I do like this type of formula that's really moussey for my lips. Just back in, just to do a little bit of shading. I should have blended that before it set. Okay, and on top of that, I wanna try out this gloss from Half Magic. So they sent over a couple of these and these just look so gorgeous. This shade right here is called Frosty B. These are super, super glittery, like, really glittery. That was a horrible swatch, but we're gonna try this. Ooh. Gorgeous. Really, really glittery. I would say less is more with this in terms of like if you don't want that frosty look. I love that, that is beautiful. And then hopefully I was able to put some more footage in here so you guys can see what we've been working on, but things are definitely calming down. Just a couple minor things like changing out light fixtures, stuff like that, but we really have just been doing a ton of yard work. Wow, the leaves, I am a professional leaf blower. It's actually hilarious, but I enjoy it. So much so that I spend probably six hours a week just blowing leaves. It just calms my mind and it's just something that I can do that doesn't have to do with like work or stress or anything like that. And we're just learning, you know, what it's like to have a pond and all of the wildlife. We fed the deer at our other house and we had deer that came every single day and we couldn't figure out why we weren't seeing any deer here. Although the previous owners were hunters, like they have a hunting, what's it called? A stand. They have one actually in the woods and I'm like, no, we're just, we're not into that. So we moved cameras and a salt lick from the backyard to the front yard and it has been a heyday for the deer. Now it is, I think like they're in rut right now, so they're breeding. But yesterday, when I tell you two bucks chase each other around my front yard for like four hours, I got so many videos, I'll put them on the screen, but I was just like loving it. I'm out there with like my binoculars and my camera. I'm like narrating, sending this to Cheryl, sending it to my husband. So it's been really fun. We've had like turkeys on the property, which I adore. I haven't seen them for a while, but things are definitely calming down and we got a ton done so that is the update again i want to do some like home favorites home decor oh my god the fly is back you guys say a prayer for your girl because i'm gonna lose my mind it just flew across with vengeance okay so i have a battle on my hands after this but i want to get back to the makeup okay so let's talk about my thoughts on everything i tried we have some good we have some bad the good absolutely love these i'm not gonna go on and on and on but highly recommend literally can't recommend them enough that's how much i love them i also i have to reach over here i also really like the huda beauty grunge palette although today i did not have the best blend ending day. Somebody was saying they thought it looked a little patchy in my last video. I have to say it always is going to look patchy. Shadows in general always look patchy and they're worse on this eye because I have microbladed brows that I cover up heavily, heavily with corrector and concealer and then I pack on the powder. Basically when I'm blending out here, that's where microblading, concealer, powder, I mean there's a lot going on so blending over it is it's just not easy, so that's what you're seeing on the corners here. I do my best, but you know. But overall, I think this palette is gorgeous. It is absolutely stunning if you like purpley, silver, really intense shades. These two shades, hands down, are just absolutely stunning. But I didn't wanna use the same shade I used in my last video, so I tried to play around. But overall, I love this palette. I think you can kind of just mix and match the shades. I do think you may have to pull another palette if you want more options for shimmers that aren't silvery or really dark. But other than that, 
this is a palette that I'm gonna reach for a ton. I'm not sure how I feel about the Benefit mascara. I wanna give it a try again and just see what I think, but I feel like it was easy to build and it was a more dry formula, so it wasn't super messy, but I do feel like I got into that sort of spider lash category really quickly. I would have liked to have more volume and not just length. I wanna see also how this removes because again, a friend of mine told me that it takes like 18 oils to take off and if that's the case, it's just not something I'm gonna reach for. I don't really like waterproof mascaras for that reason. So now we're gonna go on to the foundation. It's an absolute no for me, okay? It's a no for me. I feel like overall looking at my skin, it looks decent, but I think truly the Lunar Beauty Powder saved me. This has good coverage, it's quite thick, but I just feel like, again, those serum foundations are gonna be for those of you that have really, really dry skin or you like that thick emollient feel and you like a really dewy base. Somebody that doesn't use a lot of powder, I feel like that's who this is suited for. I really do like the brush though. This is something that I definitely will continue to use. Now, I'm not super in love with the Natasha Denona concealer. I just feel like it clings a little bit, looks a little dry looks a little cakey. I did use a lot today, but like I said, I've used this a couple times before and I just wasn't wowed by it. I just feel like it's a little too dry and heavy for my under eyes. As I said before, the Lunar Powder is life changing, you guys, I'm not kidding. If you like smoothing powders and you like the powders that I've recommended before, this is even more smoothing than the Huda. I have literally not used the Huda except for that one day since I've been using this. And when I went back to the Huda, I was like, nope, it's just not the same. There's something about this powder that's so lightweight. It doesn't cling. It is incredibly smoothing and it keeps my makeup fresh all day, but it's not that dry feel. Oh, 10 out of 10. I absolutely love it. I also love the Tom Ford highlighter. I've raved about this. I don't want to go on too much, but if you like those baked formulas that are not powdery, this is absolutely absolutely stunning. And then I also really enjoy the Armani blushes. I will say that I do like the Givenchy better, but I didn't want to use the Givenchy again because I feel like that's literally all I use. My favorite shade, I would say, is still Ecstasy. I just feel like a baby pink is where it's at. But of course, I mix them today, and you can see that my texture is not enhanced at all. They just give me a really beautiful flush, so I think these are gorgeous. I'm still absolutely loving the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Lip Liners. I already love this formula, but she came out with some deeper shades recently, and I have to say, like, Laya, Luna, and Stormy. They're so beautiful for fall. And then I really love this formula from Valentino for the lips only, but I wish it was a smidge more pigmented. I feel like I have to layer two to three times to get the color I want, and I wish it just had more oomph to it. So that's my only complaint, but this shade and the moussey feel is just what I go for every day. And then this gloss is absolutely gorgeous from Half Magic. It feels really nice on the lips. It's not sticky. It feels pretty thick, almost like a balm. It's very shimmery and there's a ton of different shades. So if you like that frosty look, I think you would love this. The only thing I noticed is when I applied that, it sort of washed away the Valentino and I feel like it's just lip liner and gloss, but it is what it is. I think it's a gorgeous formula and it gives you a really pretty shimmer that you could wear for the holidays or you know, to the grocery store or whatever you feel like doing. All right guys, so I think that is everything for this get ready with me trying new makeup. I hope I demoed some products that you were interested in and I hope that I just gave you a little Little bit of a life update so that you know what we've been working on and what progress we've made if you care. Otherwise, I will link all of the makeup that I used down below in my description box. You can also check out my Amazon storefront. I have a bunch of products on my storefront that I have purchased for the house. So all of that will be down below in my description box. I should have another huge Sephora haul coming, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But let me know what you think of the makeup and if you've tried any of these products, I would love to hear your experience down below. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. And if you enjoy first impressions, give this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.